I like the entertainment end of it. I play the drums too in a band, so. Oh yeah? Yeah, I'm a metal drummer. I would have assumed jazz. Yeah, you know what, yeah. Clarinet. Christian rock. Clarinet. Christian rock, that's yeah. what I do, absolutely. Hey everybody, welcome back to No More Ink. And you just watched the latest episode of Ink Master, and now I get to sit with the most recent artist to be eliminated, Steve Teft. So Steve, your journey on Ink Master started all the way back in season two. Yes. You're one of the OGs. One of the OGs. How was it, you know, coming back this season, knowing that, you know, your experience started all the way back in season two? Was season two so much more different than what it's become now? There's a lot of excitement and, you know, that was very new and now I've been through it so many times. I know they're gonna throw a twist at me that's gonna mess me up, <laughs> like I expect it. Yeah. So it was kind of like a great experience, but also very nerve wracking. Right. How was season two in terms of the game? Do you think that the game was a lot different back then? I really don't think people played the game much. I think everybody just kind of like didn't really get it, didn't really get the strategy too much. And everybody's not really stepping on toes too many times. Just like, hey, let's all do good tattoos. And then you realize you have to play the game. You need these advantages. Yeah, it's true. Now you are one of the masters. You have that title. Yes. You're one of the OGs, one of the first people to ever really win and secure that. Do you think that, you know, the strategy and, and the techniques and the way you approached the competition was the same in season two? It was exactly the same. It's just in season two, my ideas really worked out. Everything, I, I kind of caught my groove very early and it worked out well. This one kind of got thrown in the mix really quick. Had an idea, didn't catch my groove, didn't have a chance to catch my groove. And yeah. I was like, out before I knew it. Yeah. So. Man, do you think that once you got out of that game, you won, you took the title, did your style of tattooing change based on your experience in season two? Yes and no. I still stayed in the same genre, but I would try different ways to do it. But season two was more of a very structured, you know, we're doing Japanese today, we're doing American traditional today, we're doing portraits today, where the new seasons are now of hey, what's your artistic impression of how to do this? You're not really locked in, which makes it harder and easier at the same time. So if you don't catch a groove, I mean, yeah. you're dead. Yeah, it's more like um, a fusion now. You know how restaurants will do like, yes. like Mexican fusion restaurant? It's Absolutely. It's almost like style fusion. Uh, what I liked most about the show, you can give us one subject, everybody tattoo an apple, and everybody will do it differently. So you get to see more art, better art. Yeah. And it's just hard to keep up, you know, I'm the OG. This, this is tiring. So from your original experience, how has Ink Master sort of like carved out, you know, the last few years for you? Honestly, it's been the greatest thing that ever happened to me. I mean, personally and my career. Back in the day, you traveled and did all these conventions and prayed you get in a magazine with a picture. Yeah. And now it's like, hey, millions of people just see me. You know, now they want to get tattooed by you. As you know, you get to travel and meet amazing people. I mean, it's changed everything in the, in the business. For me, all positive. Good. All positive. Good, I'm glad to hear that. I competed, you know, season eight, and there's so much of your heart and soul that goes into tattooing, and there's nothing more frustrating than getting some crazy f skull pick, some crazy challenge, right? Where, you're, oh, where you're forced to figure it out in front of millions of people. And then go, I am not doing this well right now, and now you're starting to doubt yourself. And you're panicking. And you're panicking, and then to know, not only your peers are gonna rip it apart, your haters are gonna rip it apart, and then you gotta watch it over and over on the reruns. It's fantastic. It lasts forever. It lasts forever. Forever. It's like a stamp in time. I but... still get, you know, a Sarah Miller should have won. I go, I think so too, you know, like. <laughs> oh, hey, I get, I get, the Gion should have won, and I'm like, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Cool, yeah. right. Well, the thing is, is you get to the end with these people, and after competing with them for all of these challenges, you develop a sort of bond and a respect for them because Absolutely. it's something that you go through together. You yeah, know? it's like a big family. Yeah. I mean, it's a life-changing experience whether you choose to accept it as that yes. or, or fight it. Absolutely. Know? Yeah, totally. So how did you feel when you got the call to come back season 14? It was literally like an ex-girlfriend calling. <laughs> I remember the good times and I remember the bad times. Right. And I said, you know, I've been a part of Ink Master for so long. It's done so much for my career. I, I gotta go back and pop off the new show and see what they're gonna do, knowing it's gonna be impossibly hard. I'm part of the family and I'll probably never say no. Yeah, it's like loyalty to your family. Like loyalty yes, and honor it's like, to the... it's almost like I'm honored that they asked. Yeah. So though, let's go back and see yeah. what we can do. I mean, it was probably a lot of pressure though, because of all the seasons, there's been 13 previous seasons. 
and hundreds of, of people, I'm sure, that have competed at this point, right? Probably a few hundred. Yeah. So there were only 13 winners out of hundreds of people. That title is something, you know, to, to be proud of, to hold Absolutely. on to. Absolutely. So did that make you nervous at all, knowing you had that on the line? Yes, and knowing also my style of tattooing today, you know, doing realism and the creepy stuff isn't exactly what's popular today. I know they're gonna throw Neo Trad at me and this other stuff. Should have done a little more homework, but thought I could pull it off. No homework then, huh? No homework? I thought I could handle it and uh, the brain <laughs> locked up and I was like, it's my uh-oh moment. I had my uh-oh moment. It's like, um, you know, you came in with a, like, a freehand challenge. I feel like that's almost how you approach this season. You're like, I'm gonna freehand it. I'm gonna wing it. Like, I got this. You got, and, I got this. And then I didn't get yeah. it. And then, <laughs> I totally didn't I get it. it. I got it, I got it, I got it. I got it, I got it. Oh, God, like, it. really? I did that, right? That was oh, me, right? No. And, you know, for the first time, I actually got it as far as, because I would watch other people on the show struggle. I'm like, man, just get your groove, get your groove, get your groove. And I get on there, and of course, I got the easy one to do, my own. And then I got this one, I overthought, and I'm like, now I totally understand what everybody else went through. Yep. It's hard, like it's in my brain, it's in my head, I'm doubting everything I'm doing. And it's that slippery slope, and once it started to go down, oh, yeah. it went all the way and I could do nothing. Yeah, man, doubt is your worst enemy. When yeah. you start to doubt yourself, Absolutely. it's like, who's supporting you then if you're not supporting you? You have to be truthful with yourself. How Absolutely. can you judge other people's tattoos if you don't go, mine sucks, like mine sucks. Yeah. I know it sucks, yeah. I'm gonna tell you it sucks, let's move on. Yeah, totally, yeah. <laughs> So, you know, after you got that call, you were like, I'm prepared enough, yeah, I'm coming. And then you actually got back into that Ink Master arena, right? You came back for the Match the Master challenge. You came in and you guys came in setting the bar super high for these artists, letting them know, you know, what the standard of an Ink Master really is. Yes. But you walk in, you see the cameras, you see the lights, you see those other artists in there that have been competing. What are the feelings now? This is not gonna be as casual as I thought it was gonna be. Mm -hmm. Just come in and like, you know, just be loose. Try to my mind, stay loose, create better art when you're loose and yeah. you're free. And then you're like, okay, there's no, uh, there's nobody bad here. So there's no free falling. There's no like taking a day off. There's no like, didn't quite hit my best today. This is before me or out of here. So yeah. it went through my mind. And not only am I fighting these guys, you know, now there's DJ, now there's Anthony, you know, these other masters here. I'm like, oh, this is fantastic. This yeah. got even harder. Yeah. So the fun went out quickly, really quick. Short lived the fun. Short lived like the fun. Finished. I went from smiling like, Short fuse. oh, that's why you're my ex girlfriend. <laughs> that's exactly yeah. why. The fun had like a 20% battery. Oh, that's it. Yeah. I got yeah. to do something dead fun the next day, yeah. cup challenge. Yeah. That was it. Fun was over. Cup challenge was awesome. Broke my back, but yes. It was. Really cool. We did that on season 10, and that was my worst challenge. Wow, all right, your third time around. So coming into season 14, who did you click with the most? DJ and Anthony? Well, yeah, um, me and Anthony got very close on season 10. Me and It's funny, because me and Tony didn't get along. And then on this season, me and him, we just clicked. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Because um, I was very opinionated, talked about the show a lot, and who I thought deserved to win, who I thought shouldn't have won, and just very honest. And he took offense to that which I get, and we sat down and talked and everything's dope, and now me and him are boys, and, yeah. but yeah. Uh, you know, I get along with pretty much everybody. I think we all do. Do you think it should have been TJ Poole? Yes, 100%. Yeah. TJ is one of my very good friends, and that was a little controversial for me as well, right? Especially the style we do. Totally. That's a, and I'm like, that's a beautiful tattoo, in my opinion. It was outstanding. Yes. But the thing is, is just like every single um, round of this competition, it, there's usually a little bit of controversy because everyone has a different opinion of what art is. Art is subjective. Art is so subjective. So it's like, you know, if we're eating a burger, you like onions, I don't. Yeah. I really mean, like this burger sucks, but you like onions, so. Totally. So coming back into this competition, you know, you're, you're close with Anthony, you've known DJ before, and you guys are all masters. You've already had the title. You came back in and all in one episode, like a wolf pack almost, right? right? You came and swooped in, you right. scared the out of these competitors. I can't even imagine what they must have felt They like. were 
flipping out. They were sh I mean, it's intimidating. Four Ink Masters coming back into the competition. An already hard show, an already, already hard competition. Already, right? already hard. So do you think that being said, it made all of you guys as masters sort of stick together and form this like natural organic alliance due to history and- Yeah, I, I really do. I think um, we walked in as targets, right. like knowing that. Like if I was on their side, I'd be like, the first people we want to get rid of is those guys. And I totally understand it. And we're like, you know what? Let's pick these guys off one yeah. by one, and then yeah. let's go battle it out again. Totally, yeah. Uh, I made it easy on everybody yeah. uh, <laughs> by going home quick. But uh, no, absolutely. Just that natural of we've been there before, we've done it before. Right. Let's take these guys out. Yeah, totally. What do you think it was this season? Because you came back in with your freehand surrealism tattoo, and you did this big, bold, textured, detailed, gnarly tattoo you. that you really stood by, right? Yeah, yeah. And then we immediately went into some insane challenge. New school, black and gray, realism mashup mash up. landmarks. Landmarks. That's like a mocha choca, skinny, grande, extra. Still didn't understand it's like it. The title's this long. Watching everybody else's tattoos, still didn't quite understand right. exactly what they were looking for. Right. Yeah, and the worst part, I got to pick my own. You know, I picked a windmill that I thought had sails, but it had wires instead, which mm. I didn't see from across the room. Right. It didn't, wasn't my day. Right. So what was the weakness then? Was it in the picking of that particular Com skull? Overthought it. Overthought I completely it. overthought, instead of like you suggesting, hey, you know, why didn't you just simplify a little more to the realism bottom, the new school top? Crazy top, yeah. I'm like, no, I'm gonna do new school realism, new school realism, and then it's like, now it doesn't look like anything. Right. So instead of two pieces to the puzzle, you try to put an eight pieces. I thought I was going to out trick everybody, right. and I out tricked myself. Yeah. I looked at it, go, now it's neither. Yeah. So totally. that's not good. So, you know, you picked the windmill, you had the skull pick, you had the choice, and you seemed fairly confident going in when, as you were putting your stencil on and everything. So at what point during that tattoo did the tides sort of start? tipping in the other direction. I tattoo very fast my style. And usually when I have a plan, I stick to it and I just rock through it. And about two hours in, I'm like, I'm not even done with the outline. I am in big trouble. Because I know the amount of color I have to put in. And then once I picked the wrong color, that muted purple, and then it looked like gray, I said, I'm done. Because yeah. now it looks all black and gray. Yeah. So I write that in there, I'm like, I'm on a sinking ship and let's just try to Save somebody. Save some someone's <laughs> hopefully someone's gonna live. They'll be in critical care for Oh a while. yeah, yeah. But, so So is there a tattoo style that you would be super stoked to just never do again? Um, to be honest with you, there's more stuff I wanna do more of. There's really no stars I don't want to do. I mean, I'm kinda really over the dotted technique. Um, but I definitely wanna do more neo trad stuff. I just I really want to learn how to design that style. It's yeah. so beautiful to me. So I'd like to experiment with more of that. Yeah. I've already done realism color, and that's all about the same to me. So yeah. definitely the neo trad stuff. Yeah. I really like to just more mashup tattoos. Yeah, some of that. Landmark. My not skid marks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Landmarks or skid marks? Well, I gave you a skid mark. So, there you go. <laughs> so what about revisiting Ink Master? Would you go for round four? I, I would really have to think about it. I wasn't prepared as much as I thought. Right. Because normally when I walk in, I'm like, all oh, right, I got this. And then that mashup of a landmark, I'm like, this is just going to be hard. <laughs> and then to not think it out right ahead of time right. really bothered me. Yeah. Because once you mess that part up, you know the tattoo's doomed. The competing's hard. Yeah. It's so stressful. People ask me all the time, like, how hard was that show? Ten times harder than your hardest day you've ever had. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's like, you know, you can win a gold medal in the Olympics and it'll be the most important, amazing, powerful thing that's ever happened to you. Can you win that gold medal again? Again. And again, and it's... And as I'm getting, you know, older and a little tired, <laughs> I'm going against these hungry kids and these yeah. kids with amazing talent. And I'm like, wow, man, these guys are good. Man, like, it's hunger that drives you too. It is. Yeah. You know, and like you said, once you've uh, eaten the sundae, how, how hungry are you? So I throw myself back in the competition, like, I got this. I'm like, yeah, I don't got yeah, this. Yeah, like, this yeah, hard. Yeah, I, I don't remember being this hard. Yeah. Because I mean, was it ever hard this the hard before? Well, season two, yes. But season 10, I was a coach, so I sat back 90% of the time okay. and watched everybody else do stuff. Right. 
Now I got in there to throw it in. I'm like, that's a, that's a bad taste. I spit the bit. Mm -hmm. um, I spit the bit. Yeah. Well, Steve, I want to know then, what are you hoping to accomplish through the rest of your career? Like I said, stay with tattooing. Obviously, I love this career. Definitely, I would like to do more TV. I have fun with it. Um, the computing's rough. Yeah. Um, you know me, I run my mouth. I have a good time. Yeah. Try to. and. Uh, that I'd really like to do something like that. And do you think that you have any big dreams yet to fulfill? I want to travel more. I go to places I haven't seen. If you could travel anywhere in the world, where's your dream place to travel? I want to go to Australia. Australia? I've never been. <gasps> the Melbourne Convention's awesome. I was supposed to go three or four times, but I... Even though when I was in Melbourne, Australia, we did three days at the convention. It was awesome. And then a group of us tattooers tried to go across the street to the casino. And we had a group of security guards come up to us and escort all of us out because we were tattooed. That's happening in Australia yes. still. Isn't that It's insane. wild. It's wild. It's weird. It's weird, but it was important for me and it was eye-opening because I think sometimes in places like the US, tattoos are so celebrated and they're so Absolutely. important and special and everyone wants to get tattooed. It was a nice reminder of how lucky we are to have the opportunities that we have, to have the freedom that we have Absolutely. in those ways. And it was something I, I needed just to experience. I was literally talking about this 20 minutes ago. I said I had this tattoo and this tattoo and only, and I had hair down to my ass. And people would cross the street to get away from me because I had two tattoos. Whoa. Now I go to the beach and 16 year olds have more tattoos than me. Yeah. You know, I, so it's like, I remember when yeah. You know, I wouldn't tattoo my hand. I was already tattooing 15 years, I wouldn't do it because I didn't know if it was going to work out. Right. Would I have to get a job somewhere else? Right. So, yeah. Did, did you ever predict that tattooing would become what it is Never. today? Never. I, I knew it would get a little more popular because yeah. once women started getting tattooed, yeah. yeah. But not like every bar you go into, every restaurant, nurses, doctors, lawyers, you're like, oh, I see a tattoo on these people, you know, yeah. so-called professionals. So, you know, through 30 years of this, and like Ami told you, it's like, it used to be so discriminatory. Now it's like, why don't you have a tattoo? You right. get more if you don't have a tattoo. Right, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm excited to see what you're gonna accomplish in the future. I'm excited about the future of this competition, the future of tattooing. Yeah, it's back on again. It's back on. It's back on. Perfect. <laughs> All right, Steve, I think we got everything done for today. Awesome. Thanks for coming back. No problem. Thanks for chatting. Well, thank you guys for joining us today. Don't forget to check out the Ink Master YouTube for everything Ink Master.